Hi everyone, in this uh, video I'm going to go through um, graphs of hyperbolas and um, we would have seen hyperbolas in our self-directed task. In particular we're looking at it's what we call a rectangular hyperbola which is sort of when we have a graph in this form here. So A can be anything, it can be positive, it can be negative and where it's over X or if you like it could be a to the x minus 1. Okay, so when uh, when doing this, we've, we're going to look at a couple of key features of the graph. In particular, um, we're, we're sort of looking at these asymptotes um, when doing these hyperbolas and also sketch some reflections. Okay, so for example, if, uh, if A was a negative value, then it would reflect it in the x-axis. And we'll also find some intersections of lines and parabolas. Okay, so that's what the skills we're going to go through today. First of all, let's um, <clears throat> let's just fill out a table. If x was equal to you know, different values, well, then y would be uh, one over negative four. Uh, it would be one over negative two. It would be one over negative one. And um, well, one divided by negative a half. How many halves in, in uh, one? There's two, so that would be negative two. Okay, and this would be negative four. And likewise, going this way, one divided by a quarter. There are four quarters in a whole. Two, um, one, one half, and one quarter. And if I was to sketch those out, <coughs> So let's say negative four would be negative a quarter. Let's sort of say that's there. Let's just sketch these points. Negative two, um, negative a half. Let's sketch that. Sorry. Let's, uh, so negative a quarter would be there. Uh, negative a half there. Negative one there. And um, negative a half would be negative a half would be here. Okay, so um, and look, basically what the shape we're going to get is we're going to then sketch that and it's going to look something like this. And likewise, if I was to do it on the other side, when x equals 1, y equals 1, so that's about there. When x equals 2, y equals a half. So that's going to be sort of there. And 4 and a quarter is going to be sort of there. And we're going to get, likewise, we're going to get the similar sort of curves on the other side. Now notice it never touches the x-axis and it never touches the y-axis. So um, so if I was to get a little red, uh, red marker here, there's actually what we call an asymptote. There's an asymptote which means it, it sort of approaches that point and it never reaches it and that's actually y equals zero. Okay, so a horizontal line of y equals zero and also we've got another asymptote here and x equals zero. Okay, so this is the graph of one on x and what it looks like. Now, um, a couple of things to recognize. What would the values of y approaches x increase as infinity? Well, as, as um, x goes to infinity, as it sort of goes in this direction, then, um, you know, as x approaches infinity, then what we can say is that y would actually approach zero. Okay, it's approaching that asymptote. You can see there it's getting smaller and smaller. If I had one divided by a very, very large number, it's a very, very small positive number. And likewise over here. Okay, so um, as x decreases to zero from the left, well, what's happening well, is x approaches zero. As x approaches zero, what's happening from the left? Um, so down here, if it's approaches zero from the left, it's actually approaching a very, very small 
um, a very, very large negative number. So it's obviously very, very large negative number down there. And over here, as it approaches um, zero from, from the right, Okay, think about if I had a very, very small number, let's call it a very fraction, a very small fraction. If I had a very, very small fraction like one over a thousand, well, that's going to be a very, very large number. How many thousand in a whole would be 1,000? Okay, so, be, so the graph, the curve is going to look something like this. And you notice these asymptotes. Now, if I was to go and sketch this on a, on a calculator, what you'll see is is um, you will see that if we go ahead and sketch it now, so if I sketch the graph of 1 on x, let's do control and then divide, and you should have your CAS calculator out doing everything I do in the CAS calculator, you'll sort of see, there you go, there's the graph there. Notice though you can't see those asymptotes. You need to be aware that they're there and sketch them. Okay, so if you're doing this by hand, um, if you, then please make sure you sketch those. There's my graph of 1 on x. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're going to do now is um, look at sort of some various graphs, rectangular hyperbolas. Note that if, let's say, for example, that, um, you know, I get a value of A and that value of A is getting larger, what it actually does is it sort of stretches this uh, hyperbola out. And in actual fact, this, uh, this value here would be, for example, the graph of 2 over x. So the, the graph of 2 over x is going to look different to 1 over x. Let me show you on the CAS calculator. So if I was to press the tab key, press tab, and we put in another one, let's do 2 over x. Okay, so we've got control divide. 2 divided by x, you can see there that that's moving further away. Okay, and if I was to do it again, and I was to do 3 divided by x, it's moving further and further away. What about if I was to, if A was a negative value, let's press tab and let's sort of have a look. If I was to do, let's do negative one over X and see what happens. You can see there that it's actually, the asymptotes stay in the same place, but it's reflected. It's, that's a reflection of this green graph here. Okay, and you can see there that what was sort of in this quadrant here is now here. So, Think about this, this x-axis as a mirror, okay, and, and that's how it would look. Okay, so a negative, a positive, um, a positive hyperbola will sort of look something like this, whereas a negative one, a negative one will be reflected in the x-axis, so it's going to look something like this. Okay, that's a reflection there. If you like, it's sort of trending downwards, if you like, and this, uh, the negative one, and the positive one is trending upwards. Okay, so <clears throat> let's, um, now look, obviously, it'd, it'd be pay for you to have a bit of a read through that theory and to jot some of that into your bound reference when you get a chance. Let's go through and start some examples, and it says, sketch the graph of each hyperbola, labelling the points. In particular, we want to see the difference between some of these graphs um, how they're sort of spreading out um, for different values. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, we've already done the graph of 1 on x, so it doesn't make much sense to do that one. Well, let's do 2 on x. Well, first of all, when we're doing this, hopefully, I'm going to do this by hand, okay? So so first of all, the hasn't been moved left or right, so there's still an asymptote there, and that's an asymptote at x equals 0. There's also an asymptote there, and that's at y equals zero. So we know it's never going to get to those points, but it's going to approach those points from the left and right. Okay, so let's have a look. We know the shape is going to be something sort of like this. All right, but before we do that, let's go ahead and sub in a couple of those points. Now, when x equals uh, one, then y would be equal to 2 divided by 1, which is uh, 2. Okay, so you can see there that we've got the coordinate 1, 2. That's got to be on our graph. And likewise, when x equals minus 1, y would be equal to um, 2 divided by minus 1, which is uh, minus 2. So we've also got minus 1, minus 2 on the graph. 
Now we know the shape of the graph and you can always use a CAS calculator to help you out, but what we want to see is, let's just say I'm going up, there's one, two, three and so on. And let's go up here, one, two, three, like so. Let's go ahead and sketch those two points. When x equals one, y equals two. So it's actually been um, spread out a little bit more. And when x equals minus one, y equals negative two. So it would be sort of somewhere down here. All right, now, as you can see, what, what we want then is we want to get a curve, which it's not going to be perfect, but it's sort of going to look something like this. Okay, it's going to approach that asymptote and it's never going to quite get there. Okay, so, so it's basically, that's the graph, the graph that we've got there. Okay, notice that when you're sketching towards asymptotes, you don't want them just to, to sort of, you know, veer off this way. That's not a good graph because, of course, as you get closer and closer um, to these sort of very small, very large negative numbers, it's going to be very small negative number. And likewise, over this side, it's going to approach it like this. Okay, so, so get in the habit of that. When you're going on to do methods and stuff, um, when you're sketching graphs, you've got to really sort of draw asymptotic behaviour, we call it. Okay, now let's have a look at this one here. This time, notice there's a minus here. So, so what's going to happen? Well, instead of the shape, which is going to look like this, it's reflected in the x-axis. So a negative is actually going to, if I get like a red pen, a red pen is... Uh, it's going to, when it's reflected, it's going to actually look like this. What's the three going to do though? It's going to move it further out. So instead of having it something like this, well, we're probably, it's probably going to move it out a little bit, okay, stretch it out a little bit, and it's going to look something like this. If I get my CAS calculator, let's have a look. I'm going to get a new graph. <coughs> okay, let's do the graph with one on X. So we've got uh, control divide, 1 divided by x. There's 1 divided by x. If I was to do negative 3, negative 3 divided by x, you can see there that it's been reflected, and it's also this distance there is increased. Okay, so it's been, it's what we call dilated. All right, we, we sort of have talked about some of that in uh, transformations task. So that's the graph that we want to draw there. I guess to sort of show that it's, you can see that it's spread out, then I guess what we really do is we might sub in one value, like x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. Okay, so let's do that. So let's, um, first of all, let's find out, um, let's sub in those points when x equals 1 then y is equal to, well, it's negative 3 divided by 1, which, of course, is negative 3. Um, when x equals negative 1, y is equal to, well, it's negative 3 divided by negative 1, which is positive 3. So we want to make sure that we sketch the points 1 and negative 3 on the curve, and we also want to sketch um, negative 1, positive 3 on the curve. <clears throat> Keeping in mind, we want to keep this sh shape here. So what's it going to look like? Well, let's mark this out. Here's go. Let's go 1, 2, um, 3, and so on. And let's go 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. All right, so 1, negative 3 is sort of down here. And let's sketch um, 1, uh, negative 1, positive 3. That's going to be, I'm going up. There you go. That's where it is there. All right, now if I go ahead and sketch those, then it's going to look something like this. I'm going to approach that and never get to that point. And likewise, it's sort of going to come across down here. There you go. Now, what the last thing we need to do is we need to show those asymptotes, okay? So I want to see a sort of a, a, a broken line, y is equal to zero. It's never going to touch that point. 
it's never going to touch this point, x equals 0. Why is that? Well, let's think about it. If I was to have the value of minus 3 over x, well, think about it. Can x equal 0? Can x equal 0? No, it can't, because if I was to divide by 0, then I'm going to get an error. I can't do that. So that means if x can't equal 0, then that means that's, that's where this asymptote is here. Likewise, if this can't equal 0, then that means that there's no value here which can actually make y 0. Okay, If x has to be something and it can't be 0, then that means that y also cannot equal 0. And that's why we have those two asymptotes. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's... Um, Let's have a look at um, intersecting with parabolas. So um, first of all, it says find the coordinates where y equals 1 on x intersects the line. Well, what do we notice where they intersect? Well, what you should notice is that they both always have the same y coordinate. They actually have both the x and the y coordinate. So what we can do is if I've got, if I want to find the point where they intersect, then um, let's, let's sort of sketch it roughly. Okay, the, the graph of y equals 3, I'm going to go up once again in the same sort of, here's 1, 2, 3. y equals 3 is just a horizontal line. Okay, this is the line y equals 3. And we want to know um, the points where it intersects with the graph y equals 1 on x. Well, 1 on x, if I was to do a different colour, 1 on x we know is sort of going to be this shape. Okay, so we know it's going to intersect, and, and as you can see, it's going to intersect the once. Okay, well, we want to find where that intersects. Okay, so notice that the point it intersects, it has the same x value, and it has the same y value. So since we've got these two equations, what we can do is we can let them equal each other. Okay, so let's do, uh, so they're both y is equal to, so let's do the right-hand side, 1 on x is equal to 3. Okay, so, so we're, we're basically finding the x part first. Now, how would I solve that? Well, we could multiply both sides by x. Okay, so let's do that. If I do that on the left-hand side, that would just be 1. And on the right-hand side, that would be 3x. Now, let's divide both sides by 3. x would be equal to 1 third. Okay, so they intersect when x equals one third, but what does y equal? Well, look, we can sub it into either one of these. If I was to throw it into one, okay, so x is equal to one third, then y would be equal to one divided by one third, which of course, how many thirds in a whole? There's three of them, okay? Um, another way of doing that is one divided by one third. We want to change that to a time, so we flip it. Okay, so we flip that over like so. Okay, so it's still going to be 3. Now, and of course, but remember, with this equation here is y equals 3. So we know that the y value is 3. So there you go, we've just found it. And of course, I've actually also sketched the, both curves as well. Or, well, one's a, one's a, a horizontal line. Okay, let's have a look at the, the this one though. Um, this one's a slightly different because the graph of 4x, <coughs> if I sort of try to, here's 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'll get 1, 2, 3, 4, like so, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. The graph of 4x actually goes through the, um, through the, origin and has a gradient of 4. So if I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, it's going to be quite steep. Okay, so it's going to go through here. Okay, and there's the graph of y equals 4x. Okay, it's going to be quite steep and it's going to look like that. This is the graph of y equals 4x. Now, we want to know where that intersects with our graph of y equals 1 on x. So graphically, just to sort of show you what it looks like, this is going to be our graph. It's going to look something like this. Okay, and we've got to find where it intersects. All right, so let's. So what we're going to do is by substitution, once again, we've got y is equal to 4x. 
and we've also got y is equal to 1 on x. Once again, let's let these equal, okay? So the y's we know, they both share the same y. Let's find what x value, what x value, where these both share the same y, okay? So we're going to find that x value, and we're going to find, in, in turn, that y value. So let's let them equal. So 4x. is equal to 1 on x. Now, <coughs> let's uh, we want to solve this equation. So what we're going to do is let's get this x on the other side. So if I multiply both sides by x, 4x times x is 4x squared. And then on the right-hand side, we've just got 1. Let's divide both sides by 4. So we've got x squared is equal to a quarter. Now you notice here that there's actually two places, but of course if you do if you do the substitution in the mathematics, then you can you'll we'll actually see why there's there's actually two places where they intersect. All right, one there on, on the negative side and the other one on the positive side. So when I have this one, notice that when we're solving quadratics, then if you're solving quadratics, then we want to find the solution to that. Okay, so let's take the square root of both sides. But remember, when we take the square root of both sides, we have to consider that there's a positive and a negative solution. So I want the square root of one quarter. All right, so if I've got the square root of a quarter, but be careful there's a positive and a negative solution. The square root of one is just one, and the square root of four is two, so that's actually plus or minus a half. Okay, so, so, a, so this value here is a half, this value here we've got to find, and this value here is negative a half. Let's go ahead and find those values. Well, we can sub it into either equation. Let's just sub it into this one. When x, e, when x is equal to uh, negative a half, then y would be equal to 4 times negative a half which of course is negative 2. So that's going to be negative 2 there. And likewise, we're going to get um, 4 times a half is 2. All right, so find the coordinates. Well, the coordinates are um, this guy here and this guy. And of course, if you were asked to sketch that, then we've also done so as well. I guess if we were sketching a graph, though, one thing we've got to really be careful of is going to really show, if you want to get all your marks in the test and in the exam, you want to show that there's an asymptote here. There's, there's an asymptote here at y equals 0. There's an also an asymptote here at x equals 0. <coughs> All right, now let's. Uh, now that um, I've been through one of those, I'd like you to try this one, please. So this time, I'll get you to try it. Remember, you've got to substitute the points in, and of course, let's. It'd be nice if you could sketch it just to see what it looks like. So I'll get you to. I'm going to pause it here. Give these ones a go, and I'll go through them in this. In this. All right, so look, hopefully you've had a go at these. Um, I've done the working for you. Um, you can see this one on the on the left. Um, I could have sketched it if I like, but we could just sub it into the equation. Let these equal, which means that the right-hand sides, the y's are the same. So that means that this here, 1 on x, must equal 4. Let's solve that. So there's only one solution there. Okay, so there's only one solution, which is x equals 1 quarter. But let's find what the y is. Well, let's substitute it in. But, well, we know... Here's our equation here, y equals 4. So there's our intersection there for the, for the first one. For the second one, we'll need to sub them in, but when you have this, we're going to multiply both sides by x. So when I do that, the left-hand side is 1 and the right-hand side is 3x squared, like so. And then let's divide by 3 both sides. And then we want to, when we take the square root, we're going to have two answers. And you can see that if I draw the graph of 1 on x, it's, got, it's this one in blue here, then if I want to draw the graph of 1 on x, you can see there that it intersects twice. Um, one there, 
And as it turns out, when I find out that that's one over root three, then we can substitute it into the equation. I've just substituted it into this one. Three times one over root three is three over root three, and likewise for the other one. Now, how, how can we do this in the CAS calculator? The last thing I'll do is let's have a look and, and sketch. Let's do this one in your CAS calculator. Okay, so I've got the graph. I'm gonna just completely get out of this. I'm gonna to go to a new document. Let's start a new one. Let's go to add a graph, and I'm going to get the graph of one divided by X. So we've got one divided by X. Now, if I was to press the tab button, press tab button here, then if where that intersects with the line 3x, 3x, there you go, press enter. We wanna see where it intersects. Well, how do we do that? We go to menu. And in your test, you can do, you can use this um, because you'll have your case calculator. Analyze graph, let's go to intersection. We've got to pick a point to the left of this intersection and then a point to the right. So I'm going to select some point here and find this first one. I drag it across. Now, as you notice here, though, this, this has it in decimal form. It's not going to have it in exact form like we do here. So just be mindful of that. So that's why I guess we still need to know how to do it by hand. All right, so, and likewise, um, analyze graph intersection. Let's pick a point to the left and a point to the right, as you can see there. This, as it turns out, is this um, one on, uh, what is it? One over root three. One over root three turns out to be this value here. And this value here is three over root three. All right, so there's our two values. Of course, we've got it in exact form, but that's what it looks like. Okay, so look, you need to practice that. Um, later on, we're going to look at hyperbolas that have been moved left and right, up and down, and they're going to look a little bit different. But I guess the things that you really need to be able to know today um, is sort of start drawing those asymptotes, recognising what those are. We know that it can't be, you know, x can't be equal to zero, and, and y can't be equal to zero. Later on, we're going to look at graphs which move to the left or right. So there, there, there might actually be some x-intercepts that we need to find, but for the time being, that's um, what we're going to do. So, um, so hopefully you can make the links between this and the transformations task that we did um, the other week. All right, that's about it for me. Um, I'll see you in class.